Hello guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist, a diabetes education specialist, and a metabolism expert. Today, we are talking about how to bring blood sugar down in the morning, or the fasting blood sugar. So, let's get started. So guys, a lot of you in my clinic and in the questions in the YouTube asking about how to bring fasting blood sugar down. And that is a good question because a lot of people have high blood sugar in the morning. During the day, they're fine. In the morning, they're high. They're like, hmm, what's going on here? Because I'm going to bed with an okay blood sugar. I wake up with a high blood sugar and I'm doing nothing. I'm sure I'm not, you know, sleep eating or I'm not doing anything at night. So then why is the blood sugar high? Well, we have a video about this, very comprehensive. Why is fasting blood sugar high? You can click on that link below in the description. But today we are talking about how to fix it. So again, that's not gonna be one way street. So you have to be patient here because what works for you may not work for someone else. So you may want to see what will work for you. Now, if you know the reason, sometimes you will figure out how to fix it too. Insulin resistance is the biggest problem, right? Insulin resistance in addition to what we call relative insulin deficiency. So your body, for most diabetics, are insulin resistant and somewhat insulin deficient based on the need. So I always give this financial examples because it makes it resonates with people more. You know, if you have an expensive car, an expensive house, you have to make a lot of money. If you keep buying things, you know, credit card expenses go up. If you're not making any more money, it looks like you're actually poorer because you're in debt. But somebody who lives in a smaller house and a, you know, a less expensive car, they may have more money in their bank account that's readily available, although they're not making more than you. So same thing with diabetes, you know, your body, when you have abdominal circumference, a lot of fat in your body and you're not eating good food, etc., etc., or you have not done good in the past and now you're trying, but you're still insulin resistant because insulin resistance does not develop overnight and it doesn't go away overnight. So when you have insulin resistance, your body is not able to keep up with it. Now, how does really blood sugar go high in the morning? You know, your liver makes sugar and wants to maintain your blood sugar at a healthy level. But your poor liver has no idea what to do unless your insulin tells him what to do. I said him, I'll say it. Unless your insulin will tell it what to do. Now, the liver may also be insulin resistant. So your insulin may be knocking the door, but your liver is not responding. So as a result, your liver is thinking that there's nobody coming to saying, okay, don't make too much sugar. So your liver goes crazy because it's like, if you don't know how many people are coming to your house for dinner, then you better make a lot of food, right? So your liver says, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna make a lot of sugar. Then the question is, do you need insulin? Well, maybe you do, or there are alternative ways of you know, making that insulin or cutting the expense, which is insulin resistance. So what we need to do here is either make more insulin, right? Your body has to make more insulin, if it can, which it can, we know that because there are a lot of non-insulin medications that can help you with that. If you don't want to take a medication, what you have to do is you have to reduce the insulin resistance. Now, there are some medications actually that help reduce the insulin resistance as well, which we will talk about. And by the way, our supplement, SugarMD Advanced Glucose Support, is on its way. I'm going to tell you guys in two weeks or so it should be on amazon and it should be in some local stores as well but i am going to tell you when it's time and you will be able to purchase that that new supplement will be able to make your body make insulin and reduce your insulin resistance in a totally natural way because i know you guys hate taking medications and i know a lot of you are trying to do your best with your lifestyle changes and you are still needing some help sometimes insurance doesn't cover the good medications etc etc so many reasons that made me produce or manufacture this new supplement that brought together a lot of natural things that i know for a fact helps the blood sugar especially in the morning having said that you know we said that there are medications or there are some supplements we are coming up with can help to bring the blood sugar down 
Now, if you don't want to do any of that, then you really have to take some action. You have to really up your game with the exercise. Now, exercise is very important. Now, a lot of people will tell me, oh, Doc, I'm busy. I'm, I'm always on my feet. That's not really exercise. What we are looking here is a consistent 30 minutes to an hour exercise with a rhythm where your heart rate goes up, your muscles continuously uses the glucose, reduces the inflammation in your body, and make you more insulin sensitive. And you have to keep doing that almost every day because once you take a break, your body goes back to where it was. So insulin resistance and exercise go hand in hand. If you do not exercise, you become insulin resistant very quickly. So you do not want to give a break more than 48 hours if you're exercising and you have to keep your heart rate up as much as you can. I mean, if you have a heart disease, etc., it may not be possible for you, but at least whatever you can tolerate, discuss with your doctor first. Sometimes you guys may need a clearance if you already have some chest pain or some exercise intolerance but for most of you you should be able to start walking and gradually increase your exercise capacity start walking a mile and then a two miles and a three miles every week you can put yourself a goal now walking is not the only thing there are a lot of you have joint problems hip problems knee problems you can try bicycling stationary bicycle you can even your use your upper body there are so many things that if you put your mind to it you can definitely come up with an exercise that's not going to hurt your joints, your back, your hips, your knees. Your body is not just your back and hip and knees. You have a lot of body parts that you can actually use to get your heart rate up. If you start doing that, you will realize that you are definitely bringing your blood sugar down uh, that way. Another way of reducing insulin resistance, is, as we always talk about, is intermittent fasting. So if you, for example, do not eat after 6 o'clock and increase that fasting period, your body, that 12-hour period overnight, at least 12 to 16 hours, your body is going to be able to handle sugar a lot better. And if you fast even longer, like 16 hours, 20 hours, of course, when you first start, it's not easy to get to those levels. But I always tell my patients, hey, if you're not able to fast for four hours, try it four hours first, and then try five hours, and then try eight hours. It's like an exercise. The more you do it, the more conditioning you get, the more fitness you get out of it. So same thing with the fasting. You just need to condition yourself, train yourself to stay hungry longer, and that definitely will help you bring your blood sugar down in the morning. Again, if you have excessive abdominal obesity, if you have excessive insulin resistance, unless you get rid of that excessive fat, or unless you push your body to stay hungry for a long time, or you push your body to exercise more, you are not going to be able to do that. Now, when you exercise more, you get hungry more, and when you break a fast, you may feel like you may wanna indulge in. The trick here is to have a high protein and high fat diet, because your appetite will immediately go down if you're starting your breaking fast with water. Very important. You have to have a glass of water before you eat uh, anything that helps to prevent the overeating. And also you want to eat protein and fat first, then you're not going to have an appetite as much for the carbs. Although you may be dreaming about carbs when you're fasting, your body is craving, but instead of reaching out to that bread or reaching out for that pasta, reaching out for the potato, if you eat your protein and fat first, you're going to realize that uh, that carbohydrate is not as appealing to me anymore. You know what? I can go without it. And as a result, you're not introducing more carbohydrates to your body. You're fasting longer. You're eating healthy protein and fat. First of all, you're going to feel amazing. You're going to feel great. You're going to want to do it again. It's just an exercise. You know, when you exercise, you know, you feel like you're dying. Your body is aching. But then, you know, after the exercise, you know, you take a nice shower, you feel like, oh my God, I feel so much better. Or next day you feel better, your exercise capacity gets better. So same thing with fasting. Initially, it's kind of a little hard, but then once you get the hang of it, then things are a lot easier. You're satisfied because your morning blood sugars are better and so forth. As I said, guys, do your best, whatever you can do with these diet and exercise measures we talked about. Metformin is a drug, a pharmaceutical drug. Pioglutazone is another pharmaceutical drug. They have their drawbacks. Not everybody's a candidate for those drugs. There are GLP-1 drugs we like because they help with the appetite control, such as Ozempic, uh, Rubelsis, Trilicity, da 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 a bunch of brands out there. 
they help we call them a glp1 class so i prefer if i have to use a medication i try to use those medications the only barrier in front of me is typically the insurance insurance companies wants you, you guys to use the cheap drugs again we are not trying to give you expensive drugs but like everything in life something is good it comes with a price uh, especially these regulations they are somewhat very expensive for that reason because the production cost is too high but thank to uh, the supplements the fda still regulates them but not as tight as pharmaceuticals because you know they're called considered dietary supplements we are basically using hundreds of years of experience anecdotal experience that people have used for diabetes blood sugar management insulin resistance management so we came up with a sugar md supplement that may be a great option for you now don't ask me how to buy it because it's not available as of today it will be available at the end of february or early march on Amazon is called Sugar MD Advanced Glucose Support. And again, we'll definitely announce that on YouTube as well. So, guys, make sure you give a thumbs up, make sure you give a like and comment and share this video. I'll see you in the next one.